Show everyone how adorable you are. Teehee. You do it. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens out there. <laughs> I do not remember how to make videos. Hello, everyone. How are you? It has been literal years since I've uploaded a video like this, talking to you guys, any of this kind of stuff. How are you? How is your life? A lot of you may be asking, what the heck, Jessica? What are you doing? What, what are you doing here? <laughs> and that's where I'll tell you that back in January, I made a Mandalorian costume and I said I was going to make and finish this creation video for you guys. So that's what we're doing here. This is the Mandalorian creation video. Finally! That's what this is. May the fourth be with you. <laughs> Only four months late. <laughs> This is gonna be a quick rundown, kind of go-through video of how I made my Mandalorian costume and everything that I can give you information-wise about how I did things. It's kind of like a tutorial, kind of not like a tutorial. I kind of just explain what I do. If you are a crafter or a creator and you see something that I do in the video and you're like, just no, you should do a different thing. You are more than welcome to go and comment down below and be like, Jessica, you probably should have used this for this thing. Please, please contribute all you want. And then if you also have questions about any of my processes down below, go ahead and just drop a comment. And I'll try to, I'll try to answer as many comments as I can. If I personally feel like I wasn't able to cover something very well, I'm gonna be dumping so many tutorials and links and everything down in the description. So if you're like, I can't follow this. Um, just check the description, everything will be down there. Also really quick, I wanna to touch on what I use to film everything. I use this little selfie stick and then my cell phone. I just turn it around to selfie mode and then do the time lapse. So don't come for me, I know the quality is shit. I just, <laughs> I just like this little tripod dildo looking thing. It's great. Also, if you're like, mm -mm, Jessica, I follow you for tips and not tutorials. I have an OnlyFans, so you can go ahead and check it out. I had an incredible time making this costume. I'm a massive fan of The Mandalorian and just getting to go and do this project and going to the location to shoot and everything back in January was so much fun. I got to work with some of my favorite people, Brandon, my brother who made the music, Martin who did the photos, Eric who did the video, and Brian, of course. So without further ado, please partake in the video. Let me know what you think. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Um, and here we go. Go! I should start off by saying that I decided to do the final episode version of the Mandalorian's armor. It's far more weathered, so that means I had a lot more wiggle room with mistakes and stuff. He's got a really shiny armor set halfway through the series that he gets when he turns in the Beskar, and it's just... There's like little to no wiggle room as far as mistakes go on shiny surfaces. You can really, really see them. So I tend to go for a more weathered look so I can, <laughs> I can hide all my shitty glue seams. I also feel like I may be the patron saint of the five foot rule in all aspects of my life. So that's really important to me as well. It took me a lot of tries to figure out what I was gonna do for the shoulder pads, but I finally landed on this design here. It worked out great. I love it. I'm gonna add some additional shoulder pad tutorials and other creators that have made shoulder pad tutorials down below to help you out in case you see this and you're like, Jessica, I cannot follow this. You dumb bitch. <laughs> I cut some thin strips of EVA foam and adhered them all with contact cement. I was a big hot glue girl and for this costume I definitely wanted to go big or go home so I used a lot of contact cement. Please wear a mask when you use it though. The shit is toxic. Hang on. Contact cement is amazing. You paint both sides of the thing you are trying to glue together, you let it dry, and then you press them together, and boom, you are never getting that apart. So, work slowly. I use the contact cement to adhere all the little details that I cut out of the EVA foam onto the shoulder pads. This EVA foam is actually SKS Props Gray <laughs> HD foam. Not sponsored, he just sent them to me. So thank you, Steve. I love you. Spoiler alert, three, two, one. 
In the final episode, Mando finally gets his signet. It's the mudhorn that he killed with Baby Yoda. The armorer says, you are a clan of two and you killed the mudhorn together. And it's really fucking cool. It's a great scene. Really like what it represents because the Mando was an orphan and then the baby, the baby's an orphan and they're together now and they're a clan of two and the mudhorn was the first thing that they killed together and he didn't think that they killed together in the first place but then he realized that they are actually did dar- I just love it. I love it. I drew out the mudhorn signet onto a piece of paper, cut it out, traced it onto the EVA foam, and then used a thermoplastic called Warbla to essentially just make the signet. You guys know what Warbla is. I then sealed the shoulders with flex paint. It's like a rubber liquid latex. It's really awesome. You guys could use anything like wood glue, Mod Podge, uh, Plasti Dip, whatever you want to do. Whatever is your preference. And then I primed it. <laughs> so much better when it's primed! Wow! Next, we're moving on to the breastplate. I did a lot of research on uh, different Mandalorian breastplates and I saw a lot of different kinds that people did. I wanted to opt for like one that was co fully covered. <laughs> what a concept. <laughs> Just fully covered. <laughs> um, what a concept but still kind of sleek and futuristic looking. I bought one of Kamui Cosplay's EVA foam patterns and I'm putting it together here. That's what you see. I'm kind of not going into it too much just because this is her pattern. So if you really want it, please go check it out. I'll put the link down below for you to purchase. It wasn't exactly what I wanted for the Mandalorian. So once I was done kind of making the base front part, I started going heavily in with modifications. I tried to make it as similar as I could to what Mando has, but also with like feminine touches. I use that contact cement to adhere everything, put it all together, make it nice and strong. And then I reinforce the back with hot glue beads. I'm gonna let this play out so you can see what I did. But again, if you're interested, please check the link in the description down below. It has Svetlana's tutorials down there. They're awesome, highly recommend. She also has a bunch of different kinds and other kinds of patterns. Benny and her are my fucking king and queen. So please go check them out, I love them. Mendo's chest plate has this little diamond recessed piece that's kind of in between the pectoral muscles or in like the booby cleavage area. So I just made those details out of extra EVA foam and then cut a hole and slid it up in, in, in the back, in the back way. And then I used hot glue to like glob around, keep it all together. I hated this part. I did this so many times. You, you guys are only seeing one attempt. <laughs> oh wait, no, I lied. I, I left it in. This is, this is it. This is, these are all the other attempts. <laughs> Never feel bad for giving it a couple of attempts. EVA and foam is a slightly cheaper material, so you've got a little bit more wiggle room as far as, <laughs> as far as mistakes go. Don't feel bad, you're learning, we're learning. It's, and you do it, you do it many times so you can learn. And then even like, if you like redo it a whole bunch of times and then you even, the worst is when you redo it so many times and then you look at it and you're like, wow, it still looks like shit, but I've already redone it four times, what do I do? Okay, then I sealed it with wood glue. Um, <laughs> I used wood glue because I had so many imperfections that I wanted to continue to sand down, but you can use that flex paint, you could use plastic dip, you could use mud podge, whatever. And then I just primed it. Next is the hips. For the hips, I just used the same EVA foam, cut some squares, rounded out the bottom, then glued on some little little side panels to make it like a little like trapezoid type shape. I also ended up making it a little bit too wide, so I just cut out a little piece from each center and re-glued it. You don't have to do this. I did this because I'm silly. <laughs> uh, uh, I've, I've been so nervous because it's been so long since I've released any videos. So thank you so much for watching and getting this far. Um, tell me your favorite Animal Crossing character down below. And if it's not Raymond, you know I'll come for you. Reinforce the back with hot glue because we always hot glue bitches and then uh, seal with wood glue, flex paint, mod podge, or plastic dip, whatever you want. Next is the thighs. I referenced so many Mando pictures for this and then I just used the EVA foam for the base and then EVA foam for the detailing and then the contact cement to attach it all. EVA foam is really, really forgiving when it comes to sanding or dremeling. So if you get a chance to clean up those edges before you put them onto your thigh piece, go ahead and do that. I ran out of uh, larger pieces of foam for the second leg. So I just took a bunch of scraps and then glued them together. If you're gonna be dremeling them, scuffing it, putting on details and then sealing and painting it, it's not gonna matter in the long run and it's a great use of old scraps. The second thigh piece was slightly bigger, a little bit of a different shape. Once I was finished adding all the details with the contact cement and the foam, I took a Dremel and I scuffed the shit out of it. Be careful when you're using a Dremel because if you push too hard or if you're on a super fast setting, you can just blast your ass right through that foam. <laughs> so be careful, go slow, take your time, no worries. 
and then sealed it with Mod Podge and hit it all with a high fill primer. Next was the helmet. I bought a Django Fett helmet off of Amazon. This thing was like 30 bucks. I removed the visor and then started to alter and attach things to make it look more like the Mandalorian's helmet. I used foam for all the little extra details to make it look more like the Mando's helmet and reinforced the inside with lots of glue. If you yourself want to make your own Mandalorian helmet from scratch, you crazy person, um, I'll link Bill Duran's uh, Mandalorian helmet tutorial down below. Taking this helmet and altering it to my needs was the best option for me at the time because I was working on a, on a time crunch and I kind of didn't really want to build a full Mando helmet, so there you go. Django's helmet has a little ridge that goes around the back of the helmet that the Mandalorian does not have. So I took a Dremel with a little saw piece and cut out that little extra ridge and then tried gluing it back together the best I could to make it look like it was never there. This was honestly such a mission, I probably would have been better off just making the helmet out of foam from scratch. <laughs> I then sealed those extra foam pieces with wood glue so they would stay nice and hard and then filled in the cracks and stuff from all the cutting with wood glue and sanded it down to make it as smooth as possible. I then hit it with the high foam primer and then metallic silver that I would later use for the entire costume. Gauntlet time! I started with a rectangle for the top of my arm and then glued two pieces to each side of the rectangle to go down the side of my arm. I cut the pieces at a slight angle so when I glued them on they would be a little bit more canted and not at a direct 90 degrees. The gauntlets ended up being a little too wide for across the top of my arm so I cut it down the middle and then just re-glued them. Mismeasuring is a common theme in my life, so <laughs> just, just measure, measure, measure before you cut. Mando has little hand armors, so I just cut some little angular squares and triangles, glued them together, and made sure to cut the foam pieces that would be glued together at an angle so you would get that kind of 30 degrees, not quite 90 degrees, like just like a, just like a little, just like a little bend, like a, just like a little hint of it. There's some little triangles on top, though I used a thinner EVA foam for those, and then I used a nice long bit of thin EVA foam to do the bottom detailing on the armor hand armor. Armor hand armor. Hi, it's me. I'm really good at explaining things. I admittedly did not look too closely at the details on Mando's arms, so I kind of just had fun with it. The only thing I really wanted to make sure that I got was the little light pack at the end of one of them, and then the whistling birds on the other one. For the whistling birds, I took an existing foam dowel, cut it in half, and then took a dremel to the end to make it all pointy. I then took a soldering iron and stabbed lots of little holes in it. Please wear a mask when you're using a soldering iron. Fumes can be really toxic. I was honestly a little worried about how this would turn out, but once I sealed it and sanded it a little bit more and then added some paint, I was really, really happy with it. Used a super thin foam for all the extra details on the gauntlets. Oh my god, hot glue! Did you see her? Oh, there she was! Um, <laughs> and I just, I, I, again, I, I didn't quite look too closely at the Mando's gauntlets, so I just kind of had fun with it. Played around. Do the same. It's cosplay. Do, just have a good time. Like, who fucking cares? <laughs> I used all sorts of materials for the gauntlets. I used little googly eyes for these little, little, little beep bop boop 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 things that are on the, the, the front of the whistling, whistling spirit birds. Spirit whisplers. Whistling birds. <laughs> montage of Jessica not following the directional patterns of Mandalorian's gauntlets. Once I was all done with the detailing, it was time to put my foam gauntlets together. I added an extra piece of foam and then added Velcro to connect them. Remember to always reinforce the back of your foam with hot glue so it doesn't fall apart on shoot day or convention day. <laughs> and then seal it! Woo! Next was all the leather belts and straps and, and belt buckles and stuff. Uh, the belt buckle was made out of craft foam sandwiched between two pieces of black warbler and then sealed. I then moved on to the pouches. For the pouches, I just took regular craft foam, cut it into squares uh, for the backs and the fronts, and then added little walls with thinner pieces of foam, sanded them down so they would sit nice and flush, and then glued them on. Any additional details for the little packs were made with craft foam and then a soldering iron. I accidentally made the little packs a little too wide. Again. So I cut them down the center, removed some excess from the center, and then re-glued them. I took a dremel to the flaps that go over the top of the little pouches to give it a more organic look so that the edges would be more rounded out, a little bit more like leather. I did the same with all the little extra detailings that would go on after. 
and then I glued them on. Use a soldering iron for detailing. Don't forget your mask. And seal and prime. I completely forgot to record the process of painting these pouches, but just choose a brown that matches the pleather or the leather that you're using for your costume and you should be good. Mando's a bounty hunter, so he's got to have lots of bullets to fuck people up. So for his little blaster bullets that are all over his costume, I just took some existing foam dowels. You can get them at any craft place now that exists. Took some thin EVA foam and then just put it around the edge. Um, I probably repeated this process 25 times for the large bullets and then six times with smaller bullets for the bikini because small bikini uwu bullet <laughs> then you seal prime and paint so i'm a bit of a goofy goober I'm a goofy goober and I ended up making the little light hip pouch thingy that he has in the first half of the season instead of the one that he has in the second half of the season. So, whoops. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I've made so many changes to the costume already. It doesn't matter. It, have fun with it. Have a good time. It's, it's just have fucking fun, man. It's cosplay. Who the fuck cares? But for this, I just used three resin gems to be the actual light parts that I later put LEDs behind. I covered the edges with foam, and then I took a little foam dowel that I cut in half, and then soldered some additional little lines and stuff to make it look like a little dial. If you've made it this far, thank you so much. Uh, tell me your favorite part of the Mandalorian down in the comments down, down in the down in the comments down below. Down. <laughs> For the lights on this little thingy, I don't know what it's called, um, I just used those LED string lights. I bunched them up and then put the battery pack and glued it on the back of the belt. If you want more information on these particular string lights, the battery powered ones, I'll put some links and tutorials down below. I then sewed a little piece of pleather and glued it onto the bottom before I then attached the little, the little circle, circly doodily light thingies. Then seal all the foam pieces with wood glue. If you need to make a bullet belt, cut your pieces of fabric, sew and finish them, then glue them straight onto the bullet and then straight onto the belt. Boom! No one's gonna know that you didn't take the, the meticulous man hours to, to create individual bullet holsters for this costume, unless they fall off at a con. Or during the shoot. Which happened to me. Why are you watching this? I'm setting you up for failure. <laughs> I used little pieces of craft foam and additional pleather to add some flair, detailing, and reinforcement to the waist belt and the chest belt. I attached everything with hot glue, which you should not do. Please use contact cement or super glue, because these fell off <laughs> after I was rolling around in the sand. I then rubbed everything down with a little bit of silver rub and buff to give it a little bit more shine. I then sewed a quick simple belt and used contact cement to connect everything. This held up surprisingly well, so <laughs> catch me never sewing again! I wanted to make sure everything was looking nice and weathered, so I went back over the belt and pouches with some paint to make it look fancy. What, what fancy? I mean like scuffed and, and like it's been worn a lot. <laughs> so like I mentioned before, there were bullets on the leg as well. Oh, fuck this chair. There were, bull <laughs> there were bullets on the leg, so I just repeated the entire process. So enjoy. I forgot to record it, but on the other leg, he has a pouch similar to the one that's on his belt. So what I did is I just finished up the pouch that I made earlier and then glued it onto a sewn belt with Velcro. To connect the belt and to actually keep it on my waist, I just did a buckle in the back of the belt that was hidden behind the cape. Um, you don't have to make belts functional if you can hide, <laughs> if you can hide the shame behind you. I covered everything. I covered everything. I painted everything with chrome silver first, and then I went back over everything with my airbrush machine. I just used I just used black paint, man. Because I'm doing the final episode version of The Mandalorian, I wanted it to be weathered, I wanted it to be scuffed, I wanted it to be really battle damaged. I cannot recommend an airbrush machine more. It makes things so quick, it's so easy. It, it, it seems intimidating just because it's like, because of all the needles and like the cleaning and you have to make sure that you really like, you really take care of the machine learn the machine just take care of it just just go just do your due diligence with this thing it'll be a little bit of a learning process but the reward far exceeds the effort of learning everything like it's just so fucking worth it please do it oh hello I know a lot of cosplayers use the airbrush machine, so I'll put some tutorials down below that I found online of how you can use your machine and how you can learn to airbrush. It kind of almost feels like cheating. 
It hides a multitude of sins that you have encountered and created during the crafting process, thus accentuating the five-foot rule. You say, stay back! Five feet is far enough! <laughs> Next was the bodysuit. For all my bodysuits, I usually just lay down on a piece of paper and have Ryan trace me out. This works really, really well for stretch fabric. Stretch fabric only, and if you give yourself lots of seam allowance. There are some incredible bodysuit patterns out there, so go ahead and do some research and find what works for you. This personally just works easiest for me. I used a four-way stretch gray fabric, cut it into two identical pieces that I would later alter and add to. I originally had little side pieces, ignore those, I cut those off. <laughs> The Mandalorian wears a lot of layers to protect him from all the bullshit, so I wanted to make something that kind of looked like that but wasn't actually layered and bulky. Before we move forward, I just wanted to let you guys know I tried doing this weird midriff style thing in the middle of the costume, I ended up cutting it out entirely, so just ignore it going forward, it gets taken out in the end. Here you can see me adding little strip panels of fabric to add to the detailing of Mando's sleeves, which I then airbrushed later to make pop! Oh, I love top stitching stuff down. It makes it look really clean, really nice. I definitely think this was my favorite part of the entire bodysuit was those sleeves. I love them. When you do do your own pattern, do do. When you do your own pattern, there is a lot of like alterations and stuff that you have to make on the fly. So I was constantly putting the piece on and off to make sure it fit right. Because I was trying to simulate multiple layers to Mandalorian's outfit, I just sewed a little tube of black fabric onto each arm to simulate an undershirt. I feel like this is a really good option if you want to limit the bulking of your costume. Also, airbrush makes it look fucking awesome! For the collar, I just took some of that same black fabric from the sleeves and made a Kylo Ren style neck and then airbrushed it. I also made this tank top. This tank top simulated what was underneath Mando's breastplate. I forgot to record it, but I made a simple little pleather ab plate thing, which I then top stitched and airbrushed for detailing. And there's the tank top again. I also airbrushed that. I ended up cutting off the thighs because I found pants were going to work so much better, but this style of bodysuit kept it so it was nice and tight and flush against my body. I recycled some old pants from another costume. These are my Zix pants! To attach all the armor to the pants, I just glued some velcro onto them, you can also sew it, and then some velcro onto the actual leg pads, and then plop. Easy. Because it's foam, it's nice and light, and these didn't fall off once. I replaced the first attempt of the midriff fabric with some, just some gray, and then I airbrushed some lines on it. I, I figured it was just gonna look better, a little bit more cohesive, and taking creative liberties that are gonna aid you in the process are gonna just help you and not make you go crazy. I then took some gross paintbrush water and splattered it all over the costume as it was laying down to look like mud and debris. I went really hard on the weathering because at the end of the season finale, Mando looks like shit. <laughs> and I like that look. I like that for us. For Mando's cape, I used a grey fleece and a Spartan cape tutorial. I'll put the link down below. And lots of weathering, of course. Next, on to the weapons. The blaster was 3D modeled by Spearmaster, and the rifle was modeled by Wolf Wawa. Both were 3D printed by Habiteer Workshop, and I technically just finished them. I wanted to add more goodies to my blaster, so I just added some foam bits and pieces. Again, deviating from the original, but who fucking cares? I used XDC, which is a self-leveling resin for 3D models. Look it up, it's amazing and it will change your life. And then sanded them down and painted them. I think I may go back and try my hand at making my own weapons out of foam, simply because 3D models can be quite heavy, and I would love to revamp this costume again for the second season. I can't wait to see what kind of like weapons and stuff they introduced into the second season. It's gonna be so fucking awesome. Check all the links down in the description below for the modelers, the 3D printers, and all the other extra goods. The blaster's holster gave me a little bit of trouble, but I essentially just made an intricate pleather sock for it to sit in. <laughs> Forgot to record too much of this because I was getting really annoyed and the gun was too heavy for it and it kept pulling down my belt and everything, but I definitely want to redo it. Don't look at it. Oh god, why am I showing it so much? It's so bad. The rifle followed the same process of XTC prime, sand, and paint. So, he here we go! If you yourself would like to attempt to make the rifle yourself, I know Svetlana and Benny from Kamui Cosplay just released a rifle pattern that they'll be making and using primarily out of foam. So go check that out in the description down below. In painting the rifle, I just use a combination of silver rub and buff and acrylic paints. For every large build costume, I like to do a bikini alternate sub sub thingy so I can do some lewds with it, so welcome to the bikini part of the tutorial. <laughs> I 
tried to theme my bikinis as much as possible with the original costume, so I made those bullets that I had on my big ol' bahonga longa dongaloos. I already showed it earlier, but I just used the same process of the foam dowel with EVA strips on the end for the bullet. To keep my Danny DeVitos in place, I made two triangles with that cool silver fabric and then used the brown pleather to make a sort of bias tape edging. Then sewed some thin brown straps to keep my utter bullets in place. I thought it would be fine to piss into the wind on the, uh, on the, on the whole structural integrity of this bikini, so I just used the contact cement. I put a lot of faith and prayer into this. They held up on the day? I can recommend? 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 Just sew it. Just, just sew it. You never know what's gonna happen or what your bongles are gonna do. I don't, I don't wanna be responsible for what happens. <laughs> I had a lot of fun making tiny versions of different things on the Mando's costume. Tiny belt! I didn't use any elastic for this bikini, but with the solid rigidity of the pleather, my titties were locked and loaded. So the girls did not need. But yeah, I also airbrushed it. Titty! And finally we move on to baby Yoda. The baby Yoda head was actually 3D printed by Habiteer Workshop again. So thank you again, Habiteer Workshop. You guys can get your own if you want. The body, I made the body out of a coffee creamer bottle <laughs> and stuffed felt arms with wire. <laughs> It's so cursed, but it actually worked really well. I ended up using some little weights that I poured into the coffee creamer bottle that made it so he was really bottom heavy. So even if the wind blew or if he got bumped, he, he stayed upright. I say weights, but it's just those dollar store glass gems that you put at the bottom of like a fish tank. <laughs> I glued and reinforced his arms a bunch and then I glued the arms straight directly onto the bottle. I looked up how tall the child was and it's apparently 16 inches tall. <laughs> I had to add a little bit more height to the base to make it look a little bit more accurate. I forgot to record my baby Yoda jacket process, but I feel like I was so back and forth making so many mistakes. It's probably better if you just look up a little baby tutorial. I essentially just made a tiny baby jacket with cuffs and some trim and used Velcro for the front to seal it. I also airbrushed it so it looked nice and dirty. Cause, cause when Mando finds it, it's been sleeping in that pond and it's all dirty and it's, it's ready to go. And <laughs> My ovaries! The jacket wasn't filling out the way I wanted so I just added some additional cushion foam to the, to the cursed bottle <laughs> to give him a little bit of thickness really hope the child gets like a new, a new little outfit for season two. Holy fuck, tiny clothes. Next it was time to paint the little face. So I just primed it, primed it, primed it so it was nice and smooth and then I hit it with a green base coat. Then I went in with my airbrush machine and just layered, layered, and layered. This is technically my first time essentially painting a doll and I had so much fun with it. The little blush on his cheeks, I'm crying. Oh. I was really nervous because Baby Yoda is so damn cute that it instills the most, like, visceral d paternal instincts in you. You're an imposter. You're all straight. <coughs> look how tall you look. I'm tall. I'm <laughs> next to Baby Yoda. He's gotta have somebody to look up to. <laughs> Um, I was worried that I, I wasn't going to be able to kind of translate that in, in painting, but I think once I did the eyes and then I coated them with UV resin and I gave them like those little, those little character dots, um, it was fine. It was great. I really wanted my baby Yoda to be super poseable, so the head is on a stick and that stick goes into the top of the coffee creamer bottle. That allows for him to turn his head a bunch. There's also wire in the arms, which means it can lift its hands. Speaking of hands, for the hands, I just sculpted some little hand shapes out of tin foil and then covered it in foam clay. Foam clay is incredible. You can use this stuff like a lightweight clay that when it dries, it acts kind of like foam. I just took my time to use the foam clay to cover the tin foil hands that I made and then set them aside to dry. This stuff takes a really long time to dry, so just be aware of that when you're working with it. After they were dry, I stuck holes in the bottom so I could put some wires so that I could attach them better to the arms and then soldered some little details onto the claws. Some wrinkles and little hand thingies. I then sealed, painted, and airbrushed. The child has these tiny little hairs on their head and ears, so I just used some stuffing. I also used a UV resin on the eyes to really make them glossy and pop. Boop. I noticed you could see the green fleece I used from certain angles, so I just wrapped it with a brown fleece that matched the jacket. So it looks like they're wearing a tiny undershirt. Plus a quick test of those weights in the bottom keeping the child upright. Yeah. Oh, fuck. And finally, I'm gonna do a quick rundown on how I attach my armor. Here's my shoulder pad. This little piece of elastic goes under the armpit, and then this little piece of brown pleather just folds over and I safety pinned it onto my black tank top. 
This is all made out of foam, so everything was so light and it was so easy to attach everything. It's nothing like those dragon shoulders. Fuck. The breastplate was so easy. Because it was so light, all I had to do was attach two little pieces of elastic that I would tie around my back that would be hidden by the cape, and then one that went over the back of my neck. It, I, I was blown away! I'm so used to having to hike my titties to the heaven and it's just, look at this, it's an angel. For the hips, I just used nylon strapping with Velcro at the end, mostly so I could take them apart when we traveled. For the gloves, I just took my little hand armor, armor, hand armors, and uh, glued them onto some wool winter gloves, and then cut the fingers off, and then put them over top of some painted pleather gloves. You finished it. Honestly though, if you made it through that whole video, thank you! You did it! You fucking finished it! You're thank you so much for watching! That was the video! That was everything! That I Please let me know if they have any questions. I'll answer comments down below if you're like, what the fuck was this part about? Um, I'll do my best to respond to comments. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for, for being so patient with this and thank you so much for watching. Another thank you to Martin, Eric, and my brother for the music, the video, and the photos, and to Ryan for just being an angel at all, all times. Um, and thank you so much to you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for just supporting me on my other social networks. Just, just for however long it's been. <laughs> been years. So thank you. I really appreciate all your support and you guys for just constantly being there and constantly being inspiration for me to keep going. And thank you for giving me the life that I have right now. I would not have it without you. And I need you to know that. And it sounds cheesy as fuck, but I'm going to say it because it's super important. So yes. Also, if you make this, tag me. I'm going to fucking post you everywhere like a proud mother. Holy crap. And mostly I'll just be really impressed that you were able to follow my instructions because I feel like I'm all over the goddamn place. Oh, fuck. I have an Instagram, I have a Twitter, I have a Patreon, I have an OnlyFans, I have a whole bunch of other things, so go ahead and check them out down below. And thank you again so much, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you stay nice and safe, be kind to others, and I'll probably see you in like three years. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it a little. I promise, maybe. Who knows? I'll see you on Twitch!